Redditors who attended a wedding that was canceled mid-ceremony. What's the story? Story 1. My cousin was getting married and about 15, 30 minutes before the wedding started, she was told that the man she was going to marry had been arrested and put on the most wanted list in Washington because of what he did to a 14-year-old girl, or was going to do it. To do with a 14-year-old boy, he was 23, 26 years old. He ended up in jail for everything he did, and right after she told everyone, the back porch broke right under her and her friends. It wasn't so much fall, like six inches, but that's when she burst into tears. It was a very uncomfortable day, and to be honest, if I hadn't been there to witness it, I wouldn't have believed it either. Story 2. My wedding had to be canceled because my husband's grandfather was close to death. Everyone told us that we still need to prove the wedding, so we did. My husband's grandfather died almost the moment we said, I do and my father-in-law got a call from the hospital shortly after we left the church. They told his whole family about it, but not us. So we had a bad peach wedding where everyone was sad but said nothing when we asked why no one was dancing. The next morning, we received condolences and congratulations at his funeral. I can still cry when I think about it all. That was four months ago. Story 3. I should start by saying that I mean a wedding will never start on time. And if you show up on time, you're probably early. After 30, 45 minutes of waiting, the old ladies from her church and my aunt started talking. It turned out that they are already trying to get married for the second time. When they first tried to get married, he got into a bar fight the night before. We continue to wait, 1.5 hours total, and finally they tell everyone to go to the waiting room because they are going to lose the church. I don't think anything of it. Whatever food there is, let's go. During the reception, she does all the first dance with my uncle, the dance with her dad, all the traditional wedding stuff. In case it's not clear, this is all without her real husband. Fine. No one knows what to do at this moment. They can't make speeches because the groom is not there. And it just seems awkward to celebrate something that hasn't happened a second time. Well, the bride decided to make the toast herself. She gets on the mic and tells everyone how maybe she just wasn't meant to be married. How she's tried twice to marry this guy and it's just not happening. Then she says, Do you know where this Neasterisker is? You all know. Where? It mother is a bad person is? He's in jail, Jael Lal, because his dumb peach fiancés let him go home from a flipped bachelor party, and he got a DUI, so yeah, he's in jail, and we tried to get him out. There was no third time, and there was no Prince Charming for her. Story 4. Genital warts, I'm not even kidding. I was one of the groomsmen in my friend's wedding, and his family was extremely religious. I mean, the level of religiosity in Jonestown is why he hasn't been intimate with his bride yet. So we all waited by the altar for the music to start and chatted in silence. Now, one of the other grooms had been dating her about a year before they, now bride and groom, got together. And he said to the other groom, She's really nice and all, but she gave me something, cruel, and the one to whom he told it. And I asked him to tell a little. And I'm short she ended up giving him genital warts. We had maybe three minutes before the music started, and we all started telling the groom as fast as we could, because he had a right to know if she hadn't told him. He looked at him like he didn't want to believe us but he slowly walks down the center aisle to ask his bride if it's all true. Now when he gets up, his parents follow him because they think he's frozen. The rest I can only describe from my place in front of the church. For the next 45 minutes we heard talking, then shouting, then crying. Then dad came out and told everyone that the ceremony was being postponed. It was a small ceremony, so we all just scratched our heads and left. Two hours or so later, we all got a call that the wedding was canceled indefinitely. Apparently, the groom's parents didn't want him to marry someone who wasn't a virgin, let alone a venereal disease. We gave him some time for a few days, and after a while, he told us some details. For the most part, it wasn't that important. But the part that really stuck with me was when he told us about how the bride had to tell him and his parents in her wedding dress that she got an STD from being a baby. The groom did not call the wedding. The parents canceled it. I still think they are to this day. As far as I know, the ex-spouses are still in contact with each other, so there's that. Story 5. I've been shooting weddings part-time for seven years, and I've only seen something like this three times, although none of them were immediately canceled. 1. One of the grooms accidentally dropped the wedding ring, and it rolled into the elevator shaft. The ceremony was postponed for a little more than an hour. Surprisingly, the service staff found the ring, and apparently the groomsmen made up some fake story to feed the bride. She didn't know what really happened. Two. The bride's friend lost consciousness due to heat stroke. 3. A guest accidentally stepped on the couple's small dog, broke its spine, and had to be sent to the vet.
The dog was like a family, so the couple spent almost four hours doing it. Probably a real little dog. And this person must have been running or something. Me and my boys were asking ourselves, how the hell did you accidentally step on a dog? Story 6. The wedding is still to come. The bride and groom stand at the altar with a wooden rail in front. One of the grooms starts to sway and walks facing the plants, hitting the rail on the way down. He has a broken nose, an ambulance was called, and he was taken to the hospital. The wedding was still going on, and everyone did their best and was happy for Bird and the bridegroom. Came to the reception after the little page boy was running around like crazy, as kids do, and ran through the glass door, called an ambulance. The child was taken to the hospital. She was fine. The marriage did not last. Story 7. Not called, just interrupted. I watched my wife's friend get married. Everything was going well. As they were taking pictures after they were pronounced husband and wife, I leaned against the wall to try and get a good photo, and leaned on the switch for the whole hall. All the lights went out. Everyone was looking around and luckily no one else knew it was me, so in my confusion I tried to turn them back on, and they did not come. Now in their wedding photo album, there are some beautifully lit photos, and some that are a little sharper and darker. They don't know it was me. Story 8. We had just finished the ceremony and everyone was heading to the building to start dinner. I found my place next to the bride and started chatting with my friends. I saw the bride sit down next to me at the table and say, I think I'm going to have a fit. And she did it. Fortunately, I and a few others had a medical background and it turned out to be quite normal. When the ambulance left, she stayed and ended the night with dancing and fun. She was actually having seizures and didn't tell anyone or take her medicine that week. Story 9. My best friend's wedding was canceled. I was the master of ceremonies. His brother was his best man, so I had a unique way to experience this beauty. I arrived about two hours before the ceremony to start talking with the caterer and check out the microphone, speakers, etc. As I was chatting with the DJ and generally just checking things out, I noticed that every now and then a waiter would come by from the bar with a tray of wine, beer, and shooters. I didn't think anything of it, though. As the time neared the ceremony at the church, people were arriving and everyone had snacks and drinks near the reception area. Both the church and reception were on a wine farm, so they were right next to each other. The bride stayed for a long time, which I could not understand, since she was meeting at the guest house right on the property. Anyway, we finally found out that the bride was going to church. They brought her in on a golf cart. So we started getting everyone seated and getting ready for the show. I stood at the entrance of the church to close the door after the bride entered, to see everything unfold in all its glory. The bride alighted from the carriage, and as she walked towards the steps with her father, she tripped and fell face first onto the church steps. Since it was a wine farm, you can imagine that there is a lot of dirt everywhere, and accordingly, her dress was dirty. At this stage, I just thought she had accidentally fallen and ran to help her up. She simply dusted herself off, said she was fine, and continued walking into the church as usual. It was then that my suspicions peaked. I noticed that she swayed from side to side as she walked, but I thought that maybe she had injured herself in the fall. As she started walking down the aisle, she would stop to say hello to people on the aisles, make jokes, make faces, give people thumbs up, etc. It immediately struck me. She was a badass. By the time she got to the groom, he just stood there with his jaw open. He could immediately tell what was going on. She stood next to him in the church, right in front of everyone, swaying from side to side and wheezing indistinctly. It was painful and terrifying to witness. The best part is that she insisted that the wedding go ahead and that everything was a mess, especially since the groom wanted to suspend the proceedings for a while. She insisted on continuing. Then she blew up at him in the church in front of everyone screaming and accusing him of ruining her wedding day and then ran out of the church crying. And wouldn't you know it? She bumped into a pew in the aisle and left again flies into the ground. Wedding dresses are not made for running and especially not for drunks. People helped her up and escorted her out into the street. The groom also left and everyone just sat there in silence. As it was quite hot that day, we asked everyone to go to the reception room and have a drink while the situation was resolved. The bride had been drinking all day, and the shots and drinks I saw being carried from the bar were for her and her friends at the guest house. I asked the bar how much the bill was before people arrived, and was shocked to find that between her and two other friends, they had three bottles of wine, six beers, six ciders, and loads of crap ranging from tequila to Jägermeister. Anyway, the bride is now crying and throwing tantrums in the guest house loud enough for everyone at the reception to hear and she's obviously still drinking some of the drinks left over from the previous round of drinks.
The groom came out to apologize to everyone and say that there would be no wedding, but everyone should eat, drink, and be merry, as everything was already paid for and provided for. I announced and joined the groom and his family, who had flown in especially for the wedding, to have a drink and process what had just happened. Many people, especially from the bride's side, just went home. Meanwhile, Bridezilla was crying and drinking in the guest house with her bridesmaids. About an hour later, when many people have left, she runs out of the guest house and yells at the groom for ruining her wedding again. But this time, she's even more drunk. She rushes off with her friends and we eventually see them get into a car and drive away. We finished our food and drinks and ended the night. I drove home with the groom and his family. But when we got to the complex where he and Bridezilla were staying, she was sitting outside in a bar next to the complex, still in her wedding dress, with smeared makeup, drinking beer with friends. The groom called her father, who immediately came to pick her up and take her home. And that's the last I'll ever see of Bridezilla. They tried to make it work by going to counseling and it all failed, mainly because she was always drunk. They lived together for about two years before the wedding, and although she drank a lot, I never noticed it being that bad. Meanwhile, my friend informed me that it was actually a bit of a problem, but he didn't think it would get this bad. Well, it worked. The wedding photographer, videographer, was a friend of ours and recorded almost everything, so I still have a copy of it somewhere. Which reminds me I should probably email him and ask for a copy. TL. She's Dieter. The bride was just plain shitty, collapsed outside the church, fought the groom at the altar, then stormed off crying and screaming, then continued to drink. Asterisk edited for spelling. Story 10. I was not personally present at this wedding, but one of my older brothers was and told me about it. A wedding in a small town, the groom calls in advance and says he is already on his way, but he never shows up. No one can contact him. He literally disappeared from the face of the earth. A month later, they find his partially decomposed body in a car at the bottom of a bog in a farm field. On the way to the church, he drove off the gravel road and did not have time to get out of the car. Story 11. Not shut down, but delayed twice in one day. My colleague married the man of her dreams in June 2017. It was a tangled mess from the start. We are all about 20 years old. We've never been to a wedding either. I'm a dude, but she wanted me to be a bridesmaid, and I was happy to do it. But no one told me that I had to take a special walk to the island. So I tripped up a bit, as did the rest of the bridesmaids. But we're getting there, and that's good. It's time to bring her son a ring. He's eight. He is horrified by the crowd, throws the pillow in which he holds both rings, and runs to his grandmother, who is sitting in the first row. The wedding took place while everyone was looking for rings. During the conversation of the priests, the bride's son and niece, she is six years old, started running, playing under the bride's dress, shouting, laughing, climbing on guests, etc. The bride is terrified. Parents' nephews will not grab children because it's so cute. The groom starts making not-so-fun comments. Very tense. But the ceremony was beautiful. They survived it well, a line at the reception. A random person in their family show up uninvited, walk up and take a slice of the uncut cake before the bride is even in the room. The bride's cousin brings everyone homemade wine. It was a nice gesture, but she didn't know how to make wine. So my bridesmaid and I toast, take a sip, and I can tell there's something wrong with this wine. It's not a taste. The bridesmaid I was with didn't heed my warning and finished her glass anyway. Big mistake is she was sweating, couldn't breathe, and was now experiencing severe chest and head pains. She was allergic to wine. Two of the reception attendees end up being a nurse and a medical professional and the bridesmaid is taken care of about an hour later. Things are going smoothly, until the maid of honor gets pissed off and starts trying to make everyone else make cow faces. The bride and groom seem to be doing well. They are having fun, getting angry about the cake, but still throwing cakes in each other's faces. The end of the night comes, and this random family is still there. They begin stealing as many decorations, centerpieces, and chairs as they can before making a hasty escape. The groom's party starts to get more booze, the mother of the bride yells that the day was supposed to be perfect and it wasn't, and she needs to redo. But in the end, my co-worker and her new husband are happy together. Happily, the wedding is over, and things seem to have settled down nicely. Story 12. Wedding in Mexico. The wedding begins, but the groom does not appear. Then the friends start walking around and asking people for money. It turned out that the groom had sent candy from his home in the U.S. to a hotel in Mexico. Now he needed several thousand dollars in cash to get out of jail. The wedding guests bring money, and he returns to the U.S. He thought he was home free, but then the police showed up to arrest him for sending sweets to another country. Story 13. The groom's mother carefully planned the wedding for months, 
and even spent a considerable amount on the wedding as a gift. The groom was the only direct and youngest of your sons. Queuing on the day of the wedding and canceling two flights meant the mother of the groom would be at least two hours late, even if the caterer, priest, etc. were happy to wait, and the mother offered to pay the extra fees. The bride briefly announced that the wedding should take place and simply did not want to wait. Despite the fact that the groomsmen tried to convince her, loudly and in front of everyone, she was adamant that she, too, be listened to. The groom declared that if he married Asterisk that Asterisk, he did not want to marry and broke away, leaving her forever. Story 14. My aunt married an abusive, unpleasant man. She refused on the day, for example, an hour before the start of the ceremony. Her father, my grandfather, was standing on stage and said something like, Unfortunately, there is no wedding tonight, but you can stay for dinner and drinks for me. Almost the entire bridal party left, and it just ended up being my family. The guy she was supposed to marry died of cirrhosis a few years later. Story 15. It was strange and very disturbing when I was finally told the whole story. It started as a normal wedding, and the bride was in a veil while she waited for her father to walk her down the aisle, and when he got there, she took off her veil, and she was in tears, and slapped her father and yelled at him that in translates to, how could you do this to me, you illegitimate child? And she just walked away, wedding dress and all. The bridegroom was confused. Everyone was, but no one followed her, partly because no one knew how to act. She took a taxi home and went to heaven alone in a wedding dress without letters or anything. The groom was devastated. Her parents divorced, and that was the end of it until her mother relented. The groom was her ex-husband's illegitimate son, and right before the wedding, the groom's mother told the bride's mother, and she told the bride herself. It turns out her father had a story abusing the bride, the groom's mother and several other girls in the family. And as soon as that happened, with the inquest, he also died. He got drunk and this fool ran into his car, beating her. Not only killing himself, but also taking two more lives of the couple who were in the car he crashed into. And before that, no one suspected anything. Story 16. This is one of my favorite stories from my small town. The couple dated for several months and quickly got married. The mother of the groom never liked the bride, and it was quite obvious. The mother objects during the ceremony, but with some shouting and cursing, the ceremony continues. At the reception, the groom's mother continues to talk to the bride, and the bride has had enough of it. When the groom's mother was in the potty, the bride made her brother push him. The groom's mother stumbles out and hits the bride so hard that she loses consciousness, including her wedding dress. In short, the sheriff had to break up a fistfight between families of over 75 people. Edit. Sorry, OP. It was a wedding that ended early in the middle of the reception. Story 17. Hello, Reddit. My time to shine. A long time ago, when I was 25 or so, it was that summer wedding. You know one? The year when all the college couples finally got a job and the graduate couples got out and got hitched. Wedding season is in full swing. Anyway, I knew the groom. We weren't best friends or anything, but we were in the same business program all through college. So we were good acquaintances, good enough to be invited to a wedding. I didn't know the bride at all. She was a hometown friend of the groom and studied at another college. Somehow their relationship was preserved at a distance. Pretty nice girl from what I've heard from others who knew her. So we are at the wedding. Everything is going very well. The bride looks very beautiful and the groom is having a good day too. The couple stands in front of the church with the rest of the wedding party. The preacher gives a short sermon before getting down to the I do. From the back of the church, a one-legged boy walks down the aisle on crutches and shouts, You can't take me away! I promised I'd be here. The groom turns and runs down the aisle, but is hit on the head with a crutch. Caught him just in time because he fell like a stone. Needless to say, that's when the cow got interesting. It seemed like, oh no, almost everyone in the front of the church jumped on that one-legged dude. The bride and groom rushed to him. Both parents got down from their seats and chased after him. The numbers were not on his side, and he was quickly removed from the church. We all sat in stunned silence as the preacher announced that, due to these unforeseen events, the wedding has been postponed. Well, there is no cow. Not even Gene Dixon could have predicted the madness that would follow. A few weeks later, I got the rest of the story as told by Paul Harvey. It turns out that the bride's mom and dad had a pretty nasty divorce when the bride was still quite young. Mom remarried and stepfather was a real steadfast guy. Much better than her biological father who was almost never in her life. So the bride wanted her stepfather to see her until the evening. Biodad was not happy about this at all. From what I heard, they clearly told him that he could come to the wedding. But he would only be a guest, not part of the wedding. Biodad lost a leg to poorly managed diabetes and a taste for whiskey. 
So the bride's sister visits dad the night before the ceremony. The sister is one of the bridesmaids, and she spoke to dear old dad to make sure there would be no problems. Well, I heard a story about a dad half drinking a bottle and telling the sister-in-law of the bride that he was going to be a part of his daughter's wedding. It could not be closed just like that. And so on and so on. So at the moment of making a bad decision, the sister puts the drunk dad to bed and steals his prosthetic leg. I guess given the thought process, he would be home until she brought her leg back. I guess it made sense at the time, but hindsight is twenty twenty. But it seems like there might be a better way to handle this. After that fiasco, they married in a small private ceremony a few months later. Last I heard, they were still together, and their oldest child went off to college last fall. Tell DR a one-legged dad crashes his daughter's wedding and makes a big scene. Story 18. I wrote about this before, but I will summarize. I used to work at a wedding venue, and this happened twice. One time, when some drunken fool bit the DJ, and once everything was just arranged, it was like a bar fight in a western. In the last one, the best man kicked the bride's mother in the chest, had to fight the bride's stepfather, who tried to hit the bride with a chair. It was mental. This is the best shift I have ever worked. Story 19. I was not at this wedding, but I know this couple. The bride's feet are freezing. She decides that she does not love the groom and cannot devote herself to him for the rest of her life. She tells her parents, I think, not even a day or two before the wedding day, but maybe in the morning. Her parents are mad at her and force her to go through this. The poor guy had no idea. They marry, but she breaks up with him during their honeymoon. Story 20. I heard about a wedding where an additional part of the husband appeared immediately before the vows were read. He left the bride at the altar and walked away with a side dress, leaving the bride in tears and comforted by her family and priest. Apparently she has moved on and is now happily married to someone else, while the groom was cheated and wasted on an insane amount of money by said side item. Story 21. I wasn't actually invited to this wedding. We crashed a lot of weddings while in the military. Apparently the bride came from a devout Catholic family and the groom from an Orthodox Jewish family. I didn't hear the initial exchange, but apparently the parents on both sides were unhappy with the ceremony and started yelling at each other from across the aisle. Mostly it was just awkward until the bride started crying. At that moment, her father sees his little girl crying at the altar, which he blames on the other father. Fists flew, chairs were overturned, even mothers got in. You probably shouldn't mess with a little Jewish girl. The bartender was a family friend and went to intervene. I went to the back, grabbed a bottle of Jaeger, I was about 20, don't judge me, poured a glass, drank it, and got a fudge out of it. The Asian wedding the following week was much colder. Edit. It was fun answering your questions, but I work nights, so I need to go to bed. I will answer any remaining questions tonight. In addition, there were disastrous weddings 12 years ago. Maybe I should do an AMA. Story 22? Not in the middle of the ceremony, but when I was in high school, I worked at Mom in a pop bakery that catered weddings. We made wedding cakes and all desserts for specific reception establishments. I also had to help with the delivery of these items, mostly on Saturday mornings. For one wedding venue, we approach the venue with a three-tier wedding cake and other desserts, and the staff tells me that the wedding was canceled the night before. The guy was caught cheating on his future bride. They ended up donating all the food for the wedding, including the wedding cake and desserts, to the shelter. All of their food was already paid for anyway, so it would be a waste to throw it away. Had to get the address and take the cake desserts to another location and then the venue trucks with all the mains and appetizers. Story 23. It wasn't in the middle of the ceremony, but I was at a reception for a colleague where he got drunk and went to the bathroom and some other girl blew him off. People came up to him and the bride saw and, yes it was. This led, obviously, to a nasty divorce and he went nowhere for a while. Since then, he's done a 180 and remarried a beautiful woman and gone from being a fat, drunk slob to running literally monthly marathons and mud runs. Story 24. I went to weddings, spent time at the zoo. The bride's family were devout Baptists, and the bride's families were devout alcoholics. Police raided the reception after groomsmen bribed a coach to reopen a bar, which had been closed due to unruly behavior. As I tried to get the groom to safety, he told me, I'm going back to get one of those $500 monkeys. I never saw any of them again. Good times, good times. Story 25. I wasn't present. But when I was a kid and curious, I found the 1962 divorce papers between my dad and some Karen girl. I was more curious since it was long before he met my mom, so I asked. He met her that same week, and they had a whirlwind romance that culminated in him asking her to marry him. She told her family about it, and despite their disapproval, they had the wedding in a fairly open piece of land near her parents' house.
My dad realized just before the ceremony how stupid this idea was and that he barely knew this woman. He and his best friend both had pilot's licenses, so he calls his friend to pick him up. In field conditions, where everything was set up and people were arriving, knowing how sweet my dad really is, I find the story hysterical. Although I doubt Karen knows. Story 26. It wasn't canceled, but holy cow was it bad. I was the man of honor at my sister's wedding. And after a big argument with my parents about the music and catering, my mom pulled all the funding for the reception and the wedding out of anger at losing. The groom's father came to the rescue and got a check for $2,000 that allowed her to attend the converted seminary. I got to play Raining Blood and South of Heaven in the place of worship. Anyway, the day of the wedding, my mom and my sister cease fire, and the day passes relatively peacefully. When it came time for pictures, my mom joked or something that the first shots ended the ceasefire. My sister started yelling at our mother at the maximum volume her body would physically allow, using the words nasty and bad person extensively. My dad grabbed my mom's hand and yelled, We're not dealing with that fool! And they walked to their car. My brother chased after them. I immediately went and grabbed my five, six-year-old nephew, immediately pulled him out of the situation and left him with some very stuffed groomsmen. Then I packed up and went to the most isolated bathroom I could think of and broke down for a whole ten minutes finishing this cow. My brother convinced my parents to stay for my nephew's memories, and my brother-in-law reassured my sister. It all happened in front of the entire guest list outside the church, and the pastor was there. I was depressed. T. Daughter. My family has fit the Texas scumbag white trash stereotype this time. Story 27. In the church. Everything was beautiful. The priest was making his loaf. The bride and groom were smiling. Everything was fine in the hood. Held the best I could, but I had a major leak, and I wasn't ready to let it out in my suit. Fortunately, I was in the back row. I jumped to the toilet very quickly, came back. People we stood talking, others were on their phones and sounded worried, taking pictures. People were crying. The groom and the priest were still standing, looking surprised. It was a crazy mess. And there I was, standing in the back of the aisle, thinking about what had just fallen out. Maybe my zipper was open. I don't remember clearly. Asterisk, asterisk, TL, DR, asterisk, asterisk, biggest regret of spilling water I've ever had, asterisk, asterisk, edit, asterisk, 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 forgot to tell you what happened, haha. -ha. I was embarrassed to ask because I didn't know anyone except the bridegroom who was an acquaintance, so I didn't find out what really happened until a couple of hours later. Turns out, when it came to the vows, the bride said, obviously smiling, I don't, and then walked back down the aisle with all of the bridesmaids including the groom's sister. I don't know what the hell happened behind the scenes, but they must have planned this cow. But it didn't affect me. I feel for the dude, but he was a banana. I only went because the bride was hot. Story 28. We were all waiting for the wedding to begin, and the groom did not come to his place. First one groom disappears, then every few minutes another disappears. The guests start to make noise and worry. It turns out that the priest said he would come for the bridegroom, but forgot. The groom was going to wait for that priest to come come hell or high water. He was sure that his friends were trying to deceive him. In the end, he was convinced that it was not an elaborate prank and he left. And after some good-natured banter, the wedding went on. Story 29. I can finally tell this story. The wedding was not canceled, but postponed. I got married a few years ago on Halloween. She wanted to use her family priest who baptized her, first communion, etc. A priest of a family that goes back decades. No problem. He is an amazing person, a great scientist. The priest is a little older, overweight, and suffering from cancer. He beats cancer, but one of the side effects is that he sweats profusely. The service went well, he was great, joking and stuff. Then we were taking pictures while he was signing the papers, and he miscalculated his step, fell, and ended up tearing the tendons from his knee. My wife is devastated, thinks the wedding is cursed, etc. One of the photographers is unpleasant to the bidsman and leaves. The bidsman in a wheelchair, so she's depressed for most of the photo shoot but she's able to pull herself out of the fear and we're having a great time. People come to the reception in suits. People still tell me it's the best wedding they've ever been to. The open panel on the top shelf probably didn't hurt. The priest is also feeling well. The bishop sent him into retirement, and he teaches at the same college as me. I see him every week, and he always comments about how we tried to break him up at the wedding. Story 30. I was a bridesmaid for a girl whose wedding was canceled at 4 a.m. Ten days before, she caught him cheating in their bed and to help the girl escape. He knocked out a cow from his fiancée. They reconciled, and the wedding lasted until 4 a.m. on a weekend morning when he texted her, I can't do this. Wedding canceled, 
more than 20,000 pounds out of pocket. They broke up for six months and both saw new people. Then they got back together, they got married and started IVF. Their baby was just born. I gave up on our friendship when they reconciled. I just couldn't support them and be there for them. I really hope she is happy. She is a sweet girl and deserves better. Story 31. Not a wedding bell, but still a fun story. The girl I dated all through high school dumped me in the ditch when she went off to college, as you wish. Two years later, she was going to marry another guy, but she invited me to the wedding. I brought a date. Immediately before the ceremony, the mother of the bride walks back and forth down the aisle, blurting herself out. It seems that the organist did not appear. My current girlfriend was a musician and told her mom she could play the organ, and she was hired on the spot. So my current girlfriend played the organ at my ex-girlfriend's wedding.